Hey, I hope you're doing great. Welcome to another day in my garage. I'm working on a very big project and today is just testing to see if that big project possibly could work, which it could very much likely fail. However, I asked myself, why not bring you guys along to show you what I work with? So I received something very cool just a few days ago. And as you know, I love healthier thermoelectric coolers. I received this. This is a 200 watt Palthier thermoelectric cooler. I also got myself a couple of heatsink towers and hopefully these will be powerful enough to dissipate the heat. And my goal is to build a cooler box and see how low of a temperature we can reach. But before we can start building, we have to gather a few parts around my garage. You know, I just found this and how awesome would it be to have it as the front panel of the cooler. It will literally say awesome. Though the insulation might not be the best. But that's a risk I'm willing to take. Ooh, let's go. Painting the plexiglass just makes it blend in a lot better. Just take a look at this. It looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, and it will just blend in a lot better uh, onto the foam. And oh, by the way, I did decide to use that brown foam, which is a more stiff material than the typical styrofoam for the bottom part. And that's mostly to not have to deal with this kind of mess. So I installed two very strong magnets to keep the door closed. I also 3D printed two hinges. If you would like to know where I got the hinges or any other component, check out the description below. Uh, I will have all the components listed and build one yourself. It's a lot of fun and you'll learn a lot. And that's why I'm here to inspire you and have a lot of fun. Right now I'm working on the assembly of the thermoelectric cooler and this is pretty much like a big sandwich. You take the cold side of the Peltier that is usually the numbered side and you stack it on the smaller heatsink. You take the big heatsink and attach it to the hot side of the Peltier and that's pretty much it. And the reason and the reason you need such a big heatsink is so you can dissipate as much heat as possible because the more heat no, sorry, the, the lower of a temperature you can reach uh, or keep on the hot side, the lower of a temperature you could possibly reach on the cold side. And all of this will be glued in this piece of foam that is later going to be glued in the box like this. That's the idea. Hopefully it will work. It's interesting how in every single video where I work with Pelfier modules and therefore work with thermal compound, I always get so many comments, like half the comments are about how horribly I apply thermal grease to the Pelfier module. So this time I have looked it up and apparently the best way or the most common way was to make a pea-sized ball and then just push the Pelfier straight down and even out the field, you know? I would say it's pea-sized. So here we go, I'm gonna push it down in the middle. I'm just pushing it straight down. I'm not rocking it back and forth. I'm just pushing it straight down, leveling everything out. That's, that's it. 
So apparently this should be the best method. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. This here is a two part adhesive and that's gonna make sure that the heat sink stays in place. All right, here we go again. A pea sized thermal paste blob. Now hard and gently push it down and push. Something else you guys pointed out in my previous cooling box video, uh, thank you for posting a comment by the way, uh, was to install a small 12 volt cooling fan inside the cooling box on the cold side to make the air circulate a lot more. And that was a great recommendation and I'm gonna do it right now. This controller is awesome for temperature related projects. It uh, basically turns on or off a high current device like a Peltier and by using a temperature probe you can control the temperature inside the cooler which uh, is really cool. <clears throat> wow that was lame. Alright so you don't have too many wires to keep track of. These two are for the fan inside the cooler. This is for the CPU fan and these two are for the Peltier. And these two are gonna get hooked up to the controller while the two fans are gonna get hooked up to the power supply. I know how frustrating it can be when you try to follow someone's work and they don't show you how they wire the connections and how they set everything up. So let me show you that real quick. And yes, that is thermal grease on my only good white shirt. These wires here are for the CPU fan and the fan inside the cooler, and they are plugged in straight to the power supply. The controller has four main terminals called ground plus 12 volts, K1 and K0. So the ground is, uh, Y splitted, one is going straight to the Peltier inside the cooler and one is going straight to the power supply right there. The other one is called the plus 12 volts and it's uh, connected in the Y splitter. One is just a simple jumper between plus 12 volts and K0 right there. And the other one is going to the power supply. The last one is K1 and is uh, the positive wire of the Peltier inside the cooling box. And that's how easy it is. I didn't see any magic smoke and it didn't catch on fire, so that's a good sign. The temperature is dropping very rapidly. That is awesome, but it will take 15, 20 minutes for it to reach its lowest temperature. So I will get back to you then. Minus seven? Minus seven degrees Celsius. That's pretty good. Maybe I was expecting a lower temperature, but I'm still happy about the results. I can definitely use what I've learned from this project to my big project that I'm working on. Oh, look at this. There is so much ice forming on that heatsink. I wonder what happens if we turn this off and leave it for 30 minutes. It's one o'clock and I'll leave it for 30 minutes. What temperature do you think we will have left in the cooler at that point. All right, so I'll see you in 30 minutes. Later. All right, it's been 30 minutes and the temperature is 9.6 degrees. That tells me that the insulation is sufficient, but definitely could be improved. 
I hope I can inspire some of you to work with electronics and 3D printing. That has always been one of my goals with this channel. I really hope you did enjoy today's video. Have a nice day. Bye.